Three years ago, I ranked my favorite seasons of American Horror Story, but since then there have been three new seasons of the series, and a lot of my opinions on the other seasons have evolved, so it feels like the perfect time to update that video with my brand new ranking. The last time I did this, I also polled you guys so I could compile a community ranking of the seasons as well, and I did that again this time, so make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to see which seasons came out on top according to you. This will be a ranking of my favorite seasons of the show, not necessarily what I think are the most flawless seasons. So let's start the ranking with my least favorite season of American Horror Story. Coming in at number 12, I have 2021's AHS Double Feature. Also, this little icon indicates the difference that season ranked based on my last ranking, which I did in 2021, but of course Double Feature had not come out at that point. So that's what that little asterisk means. So what to say about Double Feature? Uh, believe me when I say that I have a soft spot for every season of American Horror Story, even the ones that I have the most negative opinions on. So to start, there's actually a lot to love about Double Feature. Those first five episodes of Red Tide delivered a fresh visual aesthetic to the series after an unprecedented break due to the pandemic, and with returning veterans Sarah Paulson, Evan Peters, Francis Conroy, Lily Rabe, Finn Wittrock, Adina Porter, Dennis O'Hare, among others, for a second there in the beginning, AHS felt like it was back with with the potential to be better than ever. However, all of that potential came crashing down on Red Tide with an ending that, that killed off almost all of its entire cast without truly resolving any of the season's conflicts. So to me, it left me feeling a bit lied to because the season is filled with great setup and intriguing concepts, especially with the character The Chemist, which was also very hyped before the season, but sadly, Red Tide and its characters were not given the proper finale to conclude their story and it cannot be understated how underused Adina Porter was in this season, and I talk about that a bit in my Death of American Horror Story series. Not only is her character killed off by episode 3, her role was also heavily cut down from what was originally scripted, according to her. And then after Red Tide, Double Feature's final four episodes give us the most baffling run of episodes that go by the name of American Horror Story Death Valley which takes us on a journey through alien pregnancies, US presidents, and Area 51, among many other things. And that right there is a major issue, because if Red Tide couldn't even begin to resolve its fairly small-scale conflicts, how on earth was Death Valley going to be able to resolve conspiracy theories spanning so many decades with two episodes less than Red Tide? Despite being advertised as a season split into two parts, Double Feature's runtime was actually 65% Red Tide and 35% percent Death Valley. But honestly, both of these themes deserve to have full seasons devoted to explore both of them to their full potential. I really liked the setup for Red Tide, and honestly, I liked a lot of what Death Valley was trying to do. A full season of AHS that explored wild American conspiracy theories and ties them all together sounds like it has a lot of potential, but unfortunately, this third of a season tries to tie those conspiracy theories together, but it lacks true cohesion because it moves so quickly. Not only that, but the episodes of Death Valley themselves are split into two parts. The first parts of each of those episodes are all in black and white and take place in the past, and then the second part of those episodes take place in color and feature the most annoying group of characters in the present day. Even with four episodes and splitting th those episodes in two, they still pack a lot into Death Valley's episodes. In the black and white portions of Death Valley, I genuinely like most of what they do in the first half. And then of course, it ended with the most anticlimactic finale of American Horror Story history. Next, at number 11, I have the most recent season, American Horror Story Delicate, which began airing in September 2023 and finally wrapped up in April 2024. This long gap between the season beginning and ending is due to the production on the season being interrupted by the actor strike, but that's not even the half of it. Of course, I just finished up a handful of videos about the season. I definitely recommend checking out my review of the final episode to really get to know what went wrong with the season. Uh, but to put it briefly, Delicate treads way too familiar ground for American Horror Story, tackling another pregnancy-centric Rosemary's Baby-inspired tale. The season's production is shrouded 
shrouded in controversy as well due to things like the casting of Kim Kardashian as well as the decision that the season would be one of the very few productions to continue filming during the onset of the writer's strike last year. And seemingly as a result of some of these things, the writing and the performances in this season left a lot to be desired. But there are some notable exceptions of Annabelle Dexter Jones, Julie White, Deborah Monk, MJ Rodriguez, and Cara Delevingne. That's right, I'm sticking with it because I got a lot of comments on my last video uh, because I, I listed Cara Delevingne as one of the highlights of the season, and apparently a lot of you were not living for Miss Delevingne's performance. And I definitely do admit that there there are times when the performance goes off the rails, and again, I did talk about that in my reviews, um, but I can only name about two actors on the season that committed as hard as Kara did, and she gave us the campiest performance of the season. Maybe Io Preacher has her slightly outdone there, but um, nonetheless, at the end of the day, it is a director's job to rein in a performance that is going over the top. That didn't seem to happen on those times when it did slightly push past the level of camp that the season was entertaining. The episode of Ave Hestia is another exception to my negative feelings about the season as that episode is a very balanced episode in terms of writing and performance and it moved the story along more than any other episode despite being made up entirely of flashback scenes. Other strong points of this season include the costumes, cinematography, and the overall aesthetics and color choices of the season which all worked very well to me. Coming in at number 10, it's Freak Show. As I said in my last ranking, Freak Show was really the only season that I struggle to connect with. With such a large cast of characters, the season feels a little unbalanced and it's got some excruciatingly sad and dark moments along the way that makes the season one I hardly ever want to rewatch, and thus I barely ever rewatch it. The ending two is very dark and bleak, which is certainly classic American horror story, but I much prefer when the seasons end on a more positive or at least open ended note. What Freak Show does have going for it though is an all star cast with the likes of Angela Bassett, Jessica Lang, Frances Conroy, Sarah Paulson, Evan Peters, Kathy Bates, and many, many more great and iconic actors. The acting is never a problem for Freak Show, neither is the cinematography. Freak Show is honestly one of the best shot seasons of the show. The 40s time period and the on location shooting in Florida add so much character and production value to this season. I'd say that this season and Hotel are the most cinematic in that it often feels like you're watching scenes from a movie and not AHS. All of that being said, I just can't put myself rewatching this one very often. I know so many of you love this season, and trust me when I say I wish I could put this one higher, but again, that's why opinions are subjective. But Freak Show is one spot lower on this list than it was three years ago, and that is because of what comes in at number nine and that is AHS NYC. NYC is another one that is extremely dark and bleak, especially with its ending. While I do think Freak Show is a better shot and better conceptualized season than NYC is, NYC really resonated with me when all was said and done. The season's antagonist serves as a metaphor for death as it blazes through New York City during the beginning of the AIDS crisis back in the 80s. This theme perfectly encapsulates the title of the series, American Horror Story, and that alone justifies why this theme needed to be explored on the show before AHS inevitably bites the dust. The season is most remarkable for me due to its historical context and emotional impact. It also has beautiful moments of cinematography along the way and Great performances from Joe Mantello, Isaac Powell, Leslie Grossman, Sandra Bernhard, and Patti Lapone, just to name a few. Having said my positives on the season, I must admit that the season is far from perfect. Where there are great performances, there are also some very, very questionable ones. But while the season has very well written and emotionally impactful moments, it also has some very weirdly written and paced scenes, like the 22nd scene where we learn that Billy Lord not only is friends with Charlie Carver's character, but she's having his baby. Something that begs for much more context and explanation, but the season doesn't give it to us. Or at least it seems to have been edited out. Another thing that the season didn't give to us was a true all-encompassing portrait of the AIDS epidemic in New York City, as the season really only focuses on gay men. 
and it fails to give us the perspectives of lesbians or transgender people who not only were also at risk of the virus, as everyone is, but they also fought alongside gay men for AIDS awareness and education. Besides that, making a season of AHS that treads so much similar ground to Pose, but only featuring one trans actress and very few people of color, is a questionable choice to say the least. If I could sum up NYC in one word, it's inconsistent as it has incredibly strong moments and, import and an important message that has a lot of emotional resonance, but it unfortunately gets weighed down by those creative choices that I've just laid out. It had a lot of potential, but in execution, it ended up leaving a lot on the table. Next, at number eight, it's AHS Apocalypse. And let me just say this, it was a moment. The first crossover season with the returns of some of the most iconic AHS characters to take on the literal Antichrist, which was set up all the way back in the show's very first season. I mean, I was more hyped for this season than any other season by a long shot. And when the season works, it really works. The first three episodes eased us into the full crossover with almost a mini season of what goes down in Outpost 3, directly after the apocalypse. And then the middle episodes gave us exactly what they promoted, a crossover between Murder House and Coven, and it actually felt like we were getting reintroduced to all of these characters for a reason, and everything was leading up to a dramatic clash between the witches and Michael Langdon. But unfortunately, Apocalypse has one of the worst conclusions to any season, in my opinion. In fact, the quality drop that occurs in the final three episodes of Apocalypse is astonishing, and it was incredibly disappointing to me at the time, and six years later, the season definitely doesn't hold the test of time, as well as some other seasons on this list. That being said, even with its flaws, I'd much rather watch Apocalypse than any of the seasons that rank lower than it on this list, and even a couple of the ones that are ranked higher. Coming in at number seven, I have Murder House, the season that started it all. It's down two spots from my 2021 list, and it's honestly just because, like Freak Show, it's one that I never really have the desire to rewatch. I mean, it makes sense because to me, these two are the darkest seasons that also have the most bleak endings. And honestly, I just need my horror to scare me and not fully depress me. That being said, the season is very scary and has a lot of strong points along the way. I mean, Jessica Lang as Constance Langdon is literally what put the show on the map, and it's an incredible performance. The twists of the season are, I'd say, among the most effective and surprising twists of the entire horror genre, and I don't really think any season of AHS has ever tried to top the plot twists in this season, and they never will. The cinematography, although sometimes a bit too much, undoubtedly established a clear and unique visual style for the entire franchise, and the costumes, the music, all go hand in hand to make this season the perfect offshoot point for what was to come, and so many aspects of this season are iconic to not only the show, but also to the horror genre. Next at number six, I have Cult. What I like about Cult nowadays is its theme, opting for a cult drama turned slasher with many twists along the way. The costumes, especially with the clown masks that the cult members wear, are definitely some of the most underrated aspects of the entire franchise. The characters of Kai Anderson, Ali Mayfair Richards, and Winter Anderson are very well explored throughout the season, and of course their respective actors gave their all with their performances this season. It's got some genuinely shocking, scary, and disturbing moments that prove that AHS seasons do not always need a supernatural element to make them impactful. Where cult doesn't work for me is the sensationalization of certain cult leaders and their victims. The entire 2016 angle usually doesn't work in the show, but luckily the election is mostly used as a shooting off point for the events of the season, and it only dwells on it for a couple points throughout the season. And of course, the finale is not perfect, but looking back now with the finales that we've gotten recently, Colt's finale wasn't that bad. Coming in at number five, I have 1984, which I love for its choice to commit to a full-on 1980s summer camp slasher 
well, at least for five episodes, it committed to that. The cast this season turned it out. Emma Roberts gave her best AHS performance with Brooke Thompson. Angelica Ross proved that she can deliver any and every twist that AHS could throw her way as Donna Chambers. And those two also proved that American Horror Story can be very strong, even without names like Sarah Paulson or Evan Peters. John Carroll Lynch was able to shine as the complex killer, Mr. Jingles, and Leslie Grossman and Billy Lord got to play iconic characters unlike any that they've played before or after this season. The costumes and the visuals this season give it its own personal touch while still evoking some classic AHS motifs. Those first five episodes function as an extra long slasher film all taking place over one night and it is a great slasher film at that. Where the season goes after those episodes though is not as great in my opinion, but it still has some very strong moments. Like a handful of other seasons, it features a real life serial killer as one of its major characters, but this season does it in a way that just rubs me even wronger than when it was done in other seasons. They depict him as a sort of satanic bad boy instead of a cold-blooded killer whose victims still have living family members, so that part of the season definitely weighs it down the most, but nonetheless, the strong points of 1984 are very strong and strong enough that it is still in my top five. At number four, I put Roanoke. I love this season's mockumentary style and the switch up that occurs halfway throughout the season. I think because of it, the season is one of the most well paced of the series. The horror in this season is strong and it has a lot of great effects work and prosthetics as well. This season was sort of the first season to lean into comedy in a certain way with characters like Audrey, and the season maintains an effective balance of laughs and scares, a balance that hasn't really been replicated in the exact way that it was in Roanoke. In my opinion, this is one of the best seasons to rewatch because while there are a couple of incredibly dark moments along the way, the sense of danger lurking at every corner in the last few episodes really keeps the momentum moving towards its conclusion, and we don't hang on those moments for too long and even those moments are not as bad as some of the things in the earlier seasons. Its finale does leave some things to be desired. For one, it felt weirdly similar to the finale of the season that came directly before it, but I honestly like the open-endedness of Roanoke's ending. All in all, Roanoke was concise, entertaining, and had high stakes that kept me on my toes at the time it aired, and still gets me invested every time I rewatch it. Now coming in at number three, it's AHS Coven. These top three for me are peak AHS, and each of them are deserving of the number one spot for different reasons, but Coven has the strongest cast of any season in my opinion, and it establishes a story and characters that are still relevant 11 years later. Coven's impact on the franchise also can't go without saying, not only is it the first of three witch-centric seasons, one of which being a literal sequel to this season, but it also got a tie-in episode of the spin-off, and it was one of the main inspirations towards the genesis of Scream Queens. The cinematography in Coven is some of the greatest of the entire series. The beautiful, bright set design of Miss Robichaux's Academy, combined with the stunning New Orleans locations, give this season the most unique style of any season that AHS has tried and failed to recapture not once, but twice. Like the rest of the first five seasons of AHS, it also has some very dark moments that make it a hard rewatch at times. The Delphine Lalaurie flashbacks, the frat house and the hospital scenes, and of course anything to do with Kyle's mother. It's all stuff I definitely fast forward through when I rewatch the season. So if you are considering watching Coven for the first time, don't be fooled by the witches and their one-liners. There is a lot of messed up stuff along the way. Nonetheless, it is one of the strongest seasons of the show, and it is my third favorite as of this year. And coming in at number two, I have AHS Asylum, Lana Winters, Sister Jude, Sister Mary Eunice, Kit Walker, I could go on and on and on. This season has so many memorable characters that you both root for and against at different points in the season, and when we talk about characters character arcs, I think Asylum takes the cake for the strongest arcs of any season. And while this season 2 has some very dark moments and twisted moments, just like in Murder House, Coven, Freak Show, and Hotel, this season makes up for it a little bit with its ending, which is definitely the most satisfying and well thought out ending of any season of the show. The scope of the season is vast, spanning decades and dealing with themes of mental illness, religion, racism, homophobia, and addiction just to name a few. The season is also infamous 
for its alien storyline, which many criticize for coming out of nowhere and never being explained outright, but I like the function that the aliens serve in the season, especially after the last time I rewatched it. Their motives and origins are definitely not clear, but they add an interesting context to all of the evil and darkness at Briarcliff in a really interesting way because people like Dr. Arden and Sister Jude will exert their dominance and power by stripping other humans of their humanity in the name of religion, but at the end of the day, they have no idea just how small they really are in the bigger picture. Not only is Asylum an incredible season of the show, but it was also the first to switch up the theme and prove the amount of potential that the show had as an anthology series. Last time I made this list, I had it at number one, and for good reason, but this year, for my number one spot, I ended up going with AHS Hotel. Again, Hotel has those scenes that all of those first five seasons have that are not my cup of tea, but nonetheless, Hotel is the most stylish and entrancing season of the series. It has my favorite cinematography of any season, my favorite production design of any season, and some of the best costumes, performances, and music as well. Lady Gaga as the Countess is definitely one of the most defining performances of the show and her career, and this season also features the likes of Angela Bassett, Kathy Bates, Evan Peters, Sarah Paulson, Chloe Sevigny, and Dennis O'Hare, just to name a few. Hotel is rich visually and in its story, as it's got about a million little subplots featuring its large cast of characters that get explored at unexpected points throughout the season, and where in seasons like Freak Show, these types of subplots would slow down the season's momentum, it works for me in Hotel because of the dreamlike storytelling and cinematography that mimics the hypnotic energy of the Hotel Cortez, and so when I watch the season, it feels like I'm being hypnotized almost. The John Lowe storyline is overly melodramatic at times and pretty predictable, but this isn't this isn't a huge negative to me. Again, this is a ranking of my favorite seasons, not the ones I think are the most flawless or well-written, but that being said, Hotel has incredibly strong moments outside of the John Lowe storyline, namely Dennis O'Hare as Liz Taylor, Sarah Paulson as Sally, Evan Peters as James Patrick March, and of course, The Countess. For me, the season really has it all, and it's currently my favorite season to rewatch watch, and that's why it's taking my number one spot this year. So with my ranking of the 12 seasons of AHS out of the way, let's now dive right into the community ranking. I asked you guys in my community tab to rank the seasons from 1 to 12, and the seasons that you ranked number one, I gave 12 points, number two got 11 points, number three got 10 points, and so on and so forth until the season you ranked last gets one point. Maybe there was an easier way to do this. To keep the rest of this video brief, I will just tell you the season name, how many points it got, and the difference between the position the season had in 2021's community ranking versus this year's. Let's begin with the season you guys named the worst season of AHS. At number 12, it's double feature with 124 points. As it is one of the new seasons, it was not on the 2021 list. Then coming in at number 11, it is AHS Delicate with 151 points. Then at number 10 is AHS NYC with 162 points. Interestingly enough, the three seasons that came out after I made the 2021 ranking are the three that you all as a collective ranked as the worst of the series, and honestly, I cannot blame you. Coming in at number nine, it's AHS Cult with 231 points, which has one of the biggest changes from the 2021 list. In 2021, you guys had it tied for fourth place, and now it is down five spots at number nine. At number eight is AHS Apocalypse with 245 points, and it is in exactly the same position as it was in 2021. At number seven, it's AHS Roanoke with 296 six points and it too is in the same position as it was in 2021. Then coming in at number six, AHS 1984 received 297 points, and it is down two spots from its position in the 2021 community ranking. Rounding out the top five at number five, you guys voted AHS Hotel with 321 points. Since 2021, Hotel has risen one position in the community ranking. At number four, AHS Freak Show received 335 points, the Freak Show stands really showed out this time because it is up five positions from where it landed on the 2021 community ranking. Coming in at number three, Murder House received 345 points, and it is in the exact same position as it was in 2021. 
At number 2, AHS Asylum is the runner-up this year, again with 407 points, and taking the community crown for the best season of AHS for the second time, it's AHS Coven, which took the lead by only 12 points this year, with a total of 419 points. That is my ranking of the 12 seasons of AHS, as well as the community ranking of those seasons of American Horror Story. Be sure to let me know what you agreed and disagreed with between these lists. Definitely leave a like if you made it this far in the video. It helps out my videos in the algorithm, so I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.